Now I'm going to go grab my patient and get their history. David Morales, uh, 213.94. Okay. And what brings you in for an x-ray today? Um, I'm feeling knee pain. Okay. How long have you had the knee pain? Uh, since this morning. Okay. Do you have any images prior of your knee? No. Okay. Any history of cancer? Nope. Okay. Um, where exactly is your pain? Uh, it's like right on top here, right on the, uh, the kneecap. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if David was a female, I'd, I would ask him if he was pregnant. Um, and at this point, I'm going to give David the gown to go change, and then we'll take some x-rays. Okay, um, today I'm going to do three images of the knee, an AP, uh, an oblique, and a lateral. For the AP and oblique, I'm going to use 70 kV at 3.2 mass, and for the lateral, I will use 70 kV and 4 mass. We're going to be doing an AP knee projection. I'm going to detent my tube. on the cassette and I'm going to center the knee one inch or a half inch distal to the patella. I'm going to shield David and because David's hip to Bucky is um, in between 19 and 24 centimeters. I'm not going to put a tube angle. The central ray is just going to be perpendicular. And at this point, I would take my exposure. Okay, now we're going to do an AP oblique with medial rotation. I have my patient shielded already, and I have my marker on the cassette, but I'm going to immediately rotate David's knee 45 degrees. The central ray is still going to be perpendicular, and it will enter half inch distal to the apex of the patella. And at this point, I would take my exposure. Okay, now we're gonna do a lateral knee projection. Um, my marker is still on the cassette um, and the tube is still detented. But this time I'm gonna have David roll all the way onto his right side. Flex your knees, your knee 20 degrees, and I'm going to reshield. And for the lateral, um, you center one inch below the medial epicondyle. Okay. And I'm also going to put a five to seven degree cephalic angle which also means I need to realign my bucky and at this point I would take the exposure mm -hmm. okay um, for the tunnel view I would do 70 kvp and keep my mass at and for the set gas method, I would do 70 kV and go down to 2.5 mass. Now I'll be doing a tangential projection, and it's the set gas method or the sunrise. So I'm going to have David lay prone. I'm going to put the cassette under his left knee and have him flex his leg right about there. I'm going to move the tube over. And we're going to do a 15 to 20 degree angle with the central ray entering the joint space between the femoral condyles and the patella. I'm going to put my left marker because it's the left knee. And I'm going to shield him. And at this point, I would take my exposure. Okay, so today I'm going to do an AP axial knee projection. Um, the Beclair method. 
So first I'm going to get my plate. I'm going to put it under David's knee. I'm going to have him flex his knee a little bit. I'm going to put my right marker on. So the central ray enters um, a half inch below the apex of the patella. And I'm going to put an angle. And the central ray with the angle is perpendicular to the long axis of the lower leg. At this point, I would take my x-ray. Um, this is a critique of an AP knee. Um, so you can see that there's no rotation. The knee's uh, fully in the front here. Um, the patella is superimposed over the femur. There's nice open um, femoral tibial joint space here with the intercondylar eminence centered right there. Um, there's slight superimposition of the tibia over the fibular head, and you can see some of the soft tissue around the knee. This is a critique of an AP oblique knee with medial rotation. Um, so you can see both tibial plateaus right in there, and there's no superimposition of the tibia and the fibula. Um, there's a nice open joint space between the femur and the tibia, and the patella is slightly over the medial condyle of the femur. Uh, this is a critique of a lateral knee. Um, you can tell this is a true lateral because the femoral condyles are superimposed. If it was rotated, those would not be superimposed. Um, there's nice open joint space between the patella and the femur, and you can see the open joint space here between the tibia and the femur. Um, you can see some of the soft tissue over here. In the image and the knee is flexed 20 to 30 degrees which is what it should be in a true true lateral um, and the patella is in lateral profile right there so this is an AP axial knee or a tunnel view um, so what you're looking for in the tunnel view is nice open um, intercondylar space um, that you wouldn't see necessarily in the AP um, so you can see both the tibial plateaus and the intercondylar eminence and this big open intercondylar fossa. Um, you can tell there's no rotation because there's slight superimposition of the tibia and the fibular head right over there. Um, and the patella is not, the apex of the patella is not down in the intercondylar fossa. Um, the angle for this view depends on the angle of the lower um, axis of the leg. Okay, this is a tangential projection of the knee, um, also called a uh, set of gas method, um, and it's also called a sunrise. Um, it's basically to see the patella in profile and the um, intercondylar sulcus. So you can see here there's nice open joint space. Um, the patella is in profile. You can see the um, soft tissue around it, um, the open patellofemoral articulation, um, and nice collimation because you don't need the whole knee, you just need the joint space right there and a little bit around it.